Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial on Okta event hooks. So what are we going to be doing in this tutorial? Let me just pull up what I have written down in my Visual Studio code. So we're going to be doing a short tutorial using Okta event hooks. We're going to be locally receiving event hooks from Okta on our machine. And uh, these are the series of steps we're going to take to do that. We're going to run a local API. We need an API for Okta to call. So we're going to run a local API. Then we use the hookdex CLI to generate a webhook URL. That is where our event hook is going to point to. It's going to point to an HTTPS URL generated using the Ookdex CLI. This will be a publicly accessible URL and it will point to our local running API. Then we're going to test the event hooks. We're going to send event hooks from Okta and we're going to receive them on our local machine and then we inspect the result. So let's get right into that. The first thing to do is to run a local API. Now you can already have a local API running, you can run in an API written in any language of your choice. The main thing you have to take note of is that, or two things, you first have to have an endpoint that the Okta event hooks are going to call. And you also need to know the port that the application is going to be running. For this exercise, I'm going to be using a sample Node.js API that is available on the hook deck repo. So you can go to this, uh, GitHub page and clone this API. It's a very simple API, just has a couple of endpoints for receiving webhooks. So I already have it cloned. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. I already have it cloned. And if we scroll down a little bit on the routes page, you can see an endpoint here. It's a post endpoint and it is named octa webhooks endpoint. This is the endpoint with which I'm going to be receiving my Okta event hooks. You can give this endpoint any name you want, but make sure you follow up in the tutorial when we are entering this endpoint, you make sure that you substitute it with your own endpoint. So we have uh, our route endpoint to receive our event hooks and note is a post endpoint because Okta event hooks are sent, the HTTP requests for Okta event hooks are sent as post requests. So it has to be a post request. So, um, Next, what do we do next? Let's look at our list. We generate a webhook URL, but first we need to run the local API. So I'm just going to go to my CLI. Yeah, my CLI, I'm already at the root of my project. If I type PWD to pull that up, you see I'm inside the project. So what I'm just going to do here is run npm start. This will automatically start my server and it will start at port 1337. Make sure you note this port. Your API might be running on a different port, but just make sure that you note the port for the next step in the process. So the next step is to generate a webhook URL. Yeah, generate a webhook URL using the Ookdex CLI. You need to install the Ookdex CLI to be able to use the tool. So you can simply just Google Ookdex CLI. And the first result should definitely pull up information on how to install the CLI and how to use it on your system. It's actually available for Mac OS, it's available for Windows, and it's also available for Linux. And you can also run it in the Docker container if you want to, or if you prefer that. Once you have the Ukdex CLI installed, let's go back to our terminal. Terminal, terminal, yeah. So I'm going to open a new tab. This can be done anywhere. You don't actually have to be at the root of the project but you can run this uh, command anywhere. You run the command hook deck, listen. Then you supply the port that your application is running. For me, my application is running at port 1337, so I supply port 1337. Now you hit enter. This is going to bring up an interactive CLI session. It's telling not to select a source. I've already created some connections here and I've already created one for Okta, for Stripe, but I'm just going to create a new one because you most likely don't have any connections. So you're just going to click create a new connection. And the next question is asks me is what should be the new source label? I'm going to say Okta events. You can actually give this any name you want. Just make sure that there are no spaces in between. Okta events. Yeah, that's good. What part should the web hooks be forwarded to? Now this is your endpoint. This is asked to be the relative uh, URL to your endpoint. That's for local debugging, definitely. So I'm just going to come here and copy this octa dash webhooks dash endpoint. Event hooks are actually uh, in octa zone 
implementation of webhooks. So you can just use the name interchangeably, but Okta prefers to call it event hooks. So I'm just going to paste that here. This is going to be my endpoint, Okta webhooks endpoint. I'm just going to hit enter to click that in. Connection label, you can give this any name you want. I'm just going to name it my server. My server. That should be enough. So my server. So as you can see, after hitting enter, hook deck gives me a webhook URL. And I have a webhook URL for my Okta events uh, connection. So this is the webhook URL that we're going to be using for our event hooks. Let me go back to VS Code and see if I'm still in sync with my steps. Yeah, we've generated a webhook URL. That's good. Now we need to register for an event hook on Okta. So make sure that you're on the Okta admin page. In the Okta admin page, then you go to workflow on the left-hand side menu and click on event hooks. Let's check again on the CLI session. As you can see, the CLI is ready. This CLI session is actually active and it's saying that it's ready to receive connections. So you have to leave this open. You have to leave this open because when Okta starts to send event hooks, they are going to be registered here. So going back to Okta's admin page on the event hooks page, create a new event hook. You see the create event hook button and click that. So we get a dialogue that prompts us to add event hook and event hook endpoint. First, we are told to put in a name. I'm just going to put a simple descriptive name. Let's say my test, my Okta test event hook. That should be fine. Then the URL field, simply paste in the webhook URL that we generated using the Ugdex CLI. Next, we have an authentication field and an authentication secret. Now, for security purposes, you might want to verify that your webhooks or event hooks are actually coming from Okta. Okta gives you the opportunity to add uh, a, a header field. You can give this any name you want and you pass in something like an API token or an API key. You pass an API key into it. This is something you supply yourself. So I can say I want this in an authorization header. And I want the my API key to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whatever that whatever you want that to be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So um this would allow you to receive the header with each event hook request and verify it to ensure that this is actually coming from Okta as you have defined. Now these are things that you are going to define yourself. Okta is not going to define it for you. You have to put, provide the name of the header and also the secret that you want to be passed in the header. And you also do the verification on your own end. Uh, for this practice, we won't need that. This is just a demo, so we just want to see stuff work. So, next, custom header fields. You can add custom header fields. Um, we're not going to be doing that, but feel free to do that in case your use case requires it. Then we click into the subscribe to events field and select an event to subscribe for. You can select multiple events. For this demo, we'll just look for the user created event. That should be enough. Okta allows you to subscribe for more than one event and you can have data for more than one event sent in one single request. Everything looks good. So I'm just going to click save and continue. And then, yeah, we get this verify endpoint ownership dialog box. Now, Okta has or Okta requires um, a one time verification request to be sent to your endpoint this is to confirm that you own the endpoint. So it's you kind of you you need to provide a get route handler for the same endpoint as the endpoint that you just submitted. You have to provide a get version of that endpoint. The endpoint that Okta is going to eventually call for the event itself has to be a post route handler, but you have to provide a get route handler for Okta to verify the endpoint. And Okta has uh, some information as to what it wants you to do to verify this endpoint. You can click on this link to get information about that. But basically what happens is that Okta sends a special header to your endpoint and you are to receive a value from that header. This is the endpoint, uh, this is the header rather, is X Okta verification challenge, that's the header. So Okta sends a value in this header and you are to return that value to Okta in your response body by specifying it in a verification parameter. So you can come to this page to get more information about that, but that's basically how Okta confirms that you own the endpoint. Lucky for us, 
Oak deck already takes care of this. Oak deck seamlessly integrates with Octa. So the webhook URL that Oak deck just generated for us is capable of verifying this by itself. So simply click verify. As you can see, endpoint ownership successfully verified. We didn't have to do anything because Oak deck has taken care of that for us. So now we have registered for our event Oak. Let's look at what is next. Go back to Visual Studio Code. Okay, so we have registered for an event to call Octa. We registered for the user created event hook. So now we can test our event hook. We can test it. How do we do that? Do we have to simulate the creation of a user in Octa? Nope. Nope, we don't have to because Octa actually gives us the opportunity to send a test web hook for the event that we just created. Right now we're on the event page, the my Octa test event hook that we just created. And all you need to do to, to send a test webhook is to pick an event type from this drop down. So you just select and we have user created already, which is the only event that we subscribe for. Octa automatically fills this system log event stuff right here. You don't need to worry about that. And you get a preview of what the request body is going to look like. So you can actually inspect this before sending it to see if it actually contains the data that you expect. To fire the event hook request, just click on the deliver request button down here. Once that is successful, you get the request delivery successful message. Now let's confirm that we are receiving the event hook on our local machine. And to do that, we go to the CLI. So I just noticed I've not been able to get my hook because it's failing for some reason. Oh, my server is down. Okay. I think my, during this tutorial, my, um, CLI kind of went down, so I had to restart it. I forgot that my server was down. So I'm just going to run npm start again. So that can be one of the issues where that can cause your connections to fail. You just have to check on your server to make sure that it's still running. Okay, my server is back up. Let's try that again. Click deliver request once again. And now we should have positive response. Good. Status code 200. So we have status code 200. We're successfully receiving the event hook is a post request as expected and it is landing on the octa dash webhooks dash endpoint endpoint yeah now we have been able to successfully get our event hooks landing in our local machine now let's inspect the results if you check aside this status code and the request method and we have the endpoint we also have an item here that is a URL is a URL. And what this gives us is a page where we can view the details of this event that we just received. So copy the URL and go to your browser. Let's open a new tab and just stick that in. Okay. 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 Loading up. And here we get taken to an event page where we can inspect all the information regarding the event that we just received on our local machine. You can see details of the connection is from the Octa events connection to my server. Um, this is the time I'm receiving the event. And here we have an headers section down here. We have headers. You can see the Octa request ID. This ID is unique for every request and you can use it to actually verify if you have received a particular event hook request before so that you don't process it a second time just to basically idempotency to make sure that your Endpoint is item potent. So you can get all your headers here. And um, down here, we have the body, which is where you're going to be most interested. The body, we have the uh, some details here, just general details around the event that has been sent. But the most important item in this body is the data and the events array inside data. This is where Octa puts information about all the event hooks that it's sending. Now, this is an array. You would expect an object to just represent the object to, to just represent the event that you're receiving. But Octa sends it in an array because as I said earlier, Octa gives you the ability to receive more than one event in a single event hook request. So we have all the event objects inside this array. We only subscribe for one, which is a user created and that's what we fired. So we have just one entry in this array. And we have all the properties for the data received in that event hook request. So this is 
most likely most of the time this is the data you're going to be interested in so we've been able to set up our system to receive event hooks from okta on our local machine and now we are inspecting the request we can see all the details well formatted easy to visualize and easy to inspect that's one of the wonderful things that the hook deck cli gives us some of the benefits of the hook deck cli is the fact that you can actually retry the event so you can click this retry button to retry this event maybe at first you got the event on your system and your code is not responding the way you want it to so you fix that you fix that bug in your code and you want to run the test again so you just click retry and the request is retried for you to once again inspect your response to the event hook another thing you can do is bookmark if this event is a special one if you need to reference it later you can add a bookmark say my special octa hook so you can just add a bookmark here and um, this event gets bookmarked as you can see it's now marked you can see all your events here on the events page you can click that and um, this is the one that errored and this was the successful one as you can see we have one attempt we can retry this if we retry it click this retry button we're going to get a second attempt it's processing but as you can see you can actually drill down to all these attempts you can click them one by one to view the data the data appears here on the right hand side so you can click each attempt to view the data contained in it so that's our tutorial on working with Okta event hooks. If you have enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to the channel for more awesome content on webhooks.